Hello everyone, welcome to day 4th of February Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is contiguous arrays. Here in this question we are given a binary array that signifies that the elements can either be 0 or 1. What do we need to do? We need to return the maximum length of contiguous sub array with equal number of zeros and 1s. So read this question very carefully. We need to return the maximum length of contiguous sub arrays with equal number of zeros and ones. Let's try and walk through the examples that are specified in the question and then we will move on to the PPT where I'll explain two approaches to solve this question. Here in the first example, we are given an array as 0, 1 and this happens to be uh, the length of 2 and it is contiguous in nature with first one as 0, second one as 1. Uh, the second one is uh, 0, 1, 0 and here you can see there are two arrays possible. First one is this one, other one is this one. The length also turns out to be 2 in this case as well. Let's quickly hop onto the PPT and let's get started with actually understanding the algorithm. Contiguous array lead code 525. So let's go by the naive approach that comes to everybody's mind. What we need to do in this question, we need to identify the length of the contiguous sub arrays with equal number of zeros and ones. So let's take a slightly longer example so that you get a good hold of the concept. Here in this case, we see the elements as 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And what is the length of the longest contiguous sub array with equal number of zeros and ones? So let's try and look at it. Uh, we start the array from here. So we have 0 here, we have 1 here. So 1 could be this possibility. Let's proceed ahead. Then we see 1, 0 again. That means the total number of zeros and 1s up till here turns out to be 2, comma 2, which is equal. That means this is the other possibility. And let's go for the third case. Let's extend it further. If you go by the complete array, then you see we have 3 1s and 3 zeros, which is which again turns out to be equal. As a result of which, the entire array happens to have equal number of zeros and ones as a result of which the answer for this problem turns out to be equal to the length of the array which is 6. Counting the number of zeros and ones is important. Don't, some people might get influenced and they start looking at the alternate zeros and ones which is wrong. The naive approach that comes to everybody's mind for this question is to have two loops for each index you iterate till the last and you check the number of zeros and ones at each step as you are iterating in the inner loop. If it happens to be equal, then you found out one possibility of the answer. However, the time complexity of this approach is of order of n square. Now comes the question, can we do something better than this? The answer is yes. How? Let's have a look at it. In the first step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace all the zeros that I have by one. So let's hypothetically assume uh, that we have replaced all zeros by 1. So my updated array turns out to be equal to minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this in the later section. So stay tuned. Now what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to calculate the prefix sum as I iterate through this array. So what would be the prefix sum? We have minus 1 here, then we have 1. So the prefix sum turns up, gets updated to 0. So this gets updated to 0. Next we have 1, it remains as 1. Next we have minus 1. So uh, it gets updated to 0 again. Then we have 1, then we have minus 1, it gets updated to 0. So assuming you have appropriately built the prefix sum, which is minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Now the problem reduces to finding contiguous sub array with a given sum. And this problem we have already solved using maps. And I will be talking about the same approach. How can we identify the length of the contiguous array, sub array with a given sum. So let's get started. Let's create a map. And in the map, what I'm going to store, I'm going to store the key as my sum value, which is of type integer. And the value would be the index at which this sum occurs. So remember these two points. The key is the sum and the value is the index up till which this sum occurs. And by default, since the map is empty and we are not yet starting, the sum happens to be 0 and it happens to be at minus 1 index. So this is a default case. Now let's get started. Uh, what sum do we see right now? We see minus 1. 
and uh, does minus one exist in my map no it doesn't exist so let's simply add minus one into my map and it exists at some zero let's proceed ahead next we see is some zero so what i'm going to check i'm going to check whether some zero exists in my map it does exist in my map and at what index does it exist it exists at minus one index that means the elements between minus one up till one does not have any impact in the overall prefix sum of the array as a result of which these two elements are nullifying each other's impact and now can you understand why did we replace min zero by minus one so that the impact of having a positive number gets nullified by the impact of having a negative number of same value as a result of which we did this replacement so if you have not understood don't worry you'll understand it further as we progress let's go back to this example and here we saw zero sum is getting repeated the current index that i'm at is one where did i see this sum in the past i saw this sum at minus one index i subtract these two indexes and this gives me the length of the contiguous sub array which is in sync with our expectation because up till starting from zeroth index up till the first index you can see equal number of zeros and ones so the first possibility of answer turns out to be of length 1 minus minus 1 which is 2 so let's write it over here let's proceed ahead next we see is sum as 1 and it occurs at two index it does not exist in our map as a result of which we simply make an addition of 1 sum 1 at index 2 let's proceed ahead next again we see a sum 0 and uh, at what index does it occur it occurs at the third index or uh, do we see sum 0 entry in my map yes it does exist it occurs at minus 1 index so again we can say that since the same sum is occurring these four elements doesn't impact the prefix sum array as a result of which it doesn't have any increment or decrement in the sum value and therefore we can say the number of zeros and ones in this sub contiguous sub array happens to be equal so let's calculate its length 3 minus minus 1 gives us 4 which is better than 2 so we make a replacement the max length gets updated to 4 and it's actually true you can see that starting from the zeroth index up till here we have equal number of zeros and ones so here the number of ones happens to be 1 2 and number of zeros again happens to be 2 let's proceed ahead next we see is some 1 does one exist in my map yes it does exist in my map and at what index does it occur it occurs at index 2 where at we currently we are at index 4 so let's uh, again say that the last two elements starting from second index up till the fourth index doesn't have any impact on the sum as a result of which we found another possibility of answer but what it its length 4 minus 2 gives me 2 which is lower than the max value that we have seen so far so we are not going to update it this is actually true because we can see say that uh, these two elements have equal number of zeros and ones so this sub array has equal number of zeros and ones which is 1 let's proceed ahead next again we see is a zero in the prefix sum and at what index does it occur it occurs at 5 so again we can say that uh, all the elements starting from the minus 1 index up till 5 index does not have any impact on the overall prefix sum any increment or decrement as a result of which it will have equal number of zeros and ones so let's find out the difference 5 minus minus 1 gives me 6 which is better than 4 so we make a replacement and it gets updated to 6 which is also in sync with our expectation we can say that the overall array has equal number of zeros and ones and we have finally concluded the approach the time complexity of this approach is order of n also we are using extra space for building the map as a result of which the space complexity also turns out to be of order of n for those who are still little bit confused uh will everything will be clear when we walk through the coding section so let's quickly hop on to it as i told in the presentation in the first step what do i do i replace all zeros with minus 1 so that the impact while calculating the prefix sum gets nullified 
Next, I go ahead and create a map of integer comma integer. This would store the key would be the prefix sum, and the value would be the index, the first index at which this prefix sum occurs. As a default case, I'm gonna put into my map sum zero prefix sum zero, and it occurs at minus one index. I also create a variable named prefix sum and max length variable to actually store my answer. I start the iteration. I create the prefix sum. Prefix sum is equal to prefix sum plus nums. And in case my map does contains this prefix sum, what do I do? I calculate the current length of contiguous subarray, which would be equal to i minus map dot get prefix sum. And in case this current length happens to be greater than the max length, I simply make a replacement. Uh, moving ahead, I put into my map if my prefix sum is not present. So put if absent is important, and I, I add it at the prefix sum value comma the current index which I'm at. So that the difference every time is calculated as of maximum value. So this is very important. Once I'm done with this, I simply return the max length variable. So let's submit this up and see how my algo has performed. It's not that great. I think we can do some optimization. In, we are iterating through the array twice. So the time complexity for this approach is order of order of n plus order of n. Uh, can we do can we do something better? The answer is yes. So let's delete this up and let's have a check if my current element happens to be of type zero of value zero. What do I do? I need to assume it to be of minus one value. Otherwise, let's keep it one. So this should significantly improve the time complexity. And let's try this up. Okay, sorry for the typo. Okay, we this needs to be evaluated. Let's just run the code first before submitting it up. Awesome. Again, it says five percent better, but I am not very sure why is it doing. Maybe I'm connected to VPN. That's the reason. The time complexity is order of n, and the space complexity is again of order of n. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.